All righty. I'm ready to interrupt the announcing of the two finalists by giving points. We got to figure out a uh, like a solid, a solid cutoff time. We haven't done that yet. That's my fault. This is that's my job, and I haven't done it. Welcome back, everybody. We are here for episode three. We are on episode three here of Around the Saloon, season two. Corridan is our returning champ from last week. He won last week. He got the giant Cheeto crown. Not Cheeto, Dorito crown, sorry. Uh, Zorog's crown was is our, our season two crown here. Joining him is Mr. Always Just in Time, who is conveniently one minute late to the designated time I gave him. Ron Mexico, back as always, Mr. Ronnie Monday and Tuesday. And then Marty B is joining us as well. Cheeto Crown. Don't don't at me like that. You know I meant to say Dorito. They both end with toe. Um, let's welcome back Corden first. Corden, you're on the mic. Hey, how's hey. it going? I I'm doing fine. How are you doing? Great. Great. I'm doing good as well. Ready I'm to ready defend? to defend, man. I'm uh, I'm hyped. New crown. I, I stole it from Don Day, so yeah. um, let's hope I can hold it. It is it's a heavy night tonight, though. There are some there are some heavy hitters tonight, so there are. Some we'll have to hitters. see how it goes. Yeah, yeah. We we, <laughs> uh, Steffi, I'm sure is not very happy that she was on last week, considering last week we had zero battlegrounds questions, and this week we have three. So yeah, uh, yeah this is gonna be fun. It's going to be fun. Let's move over to Mr. Always One Minute Late. How you doing? I'm doing well. I'm really excited to have uh, the top Battlegrounds expert on here tonight uh, to, to get really dig into these Battlegrounds questions. Uh, the, the, the one, the only, Ronnie Ogremar, who correctly predicted the mechanic the Quill Boars are based around. This is incredible. I, I actually heard, I heard that Alec Dawson still snooped in the Discord, they actually stole the idea from him. Uh, that's the rumor going around. So yeah, I, I don't know if, he, if he's going to get a patent out of it or something, but he certainly deserves it. He he, he must have been watching Saloon. He, that, that that has to be it, right? Ron, how you doing? Doing good, man. Happy to be back. Uh, it's been a little while. Lengthy break from Saloon. Um, you know, excited to uh, to be rejoining. Kind of sad that I missed last week and I'm here this week, given that there were no Battlegrounds questions last week and three this week, but it's fine. I just, I predict all the Battlegrounds things apparently, so we got this. Yeah, you, you had to take take your hiatus, go in hibernation, let let some other people compete, and now you're back and you're ready to get second place. <laughs> Staying on brand. Ooh. Hey, what's up? Doing pretty oh. good. Sorry. Nope. Can you not hear me? We, no, I can hear oh, you. Oh, no, you're good. We, we, oh, lost, no. we lost Justin there for a second. It threw me off. He's back, though. Marty, how you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm I'm doing fine. I'm doing just yeah. fine. Just peachy, if you will. Just peachy. Just peachy. I actually, you know what? I wish I had a peach. That sounds very good right now. I have grapes. Maybe I should go get some grapes. Mm. Not uh, same. You know, not Duck same. once asked if you got any grapes. And I guess you can say yes. What? A duck? Wait, have you never heard that song? No. You're not supposed to feed Am I going to have to do this? Please don't. I'm going to have to link this in here. Hold on. <laughs> can you, you can just I hate tell this. me. I might right, know. You guys are going to see. You've never heard the duck song. Please I, don't feed the duck. <laughs> I don't know. It's literally called the duck song. I, 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 you, if you would have asked me what it was called, that would have been my first guess. Yeah, it's the duck song. Come on. Okay. I, I mean I'm not gonna pull it up. I'll 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 think I'll I'll try and remember it for later. Okay, I'll try and remember yeah. it for later. Um, all right. So if you didn't get uh um if you didn't get the hint last week, we are kind of tinkering with the formula a little bit in the show. Um, last week we ended about a half hour earlier, and uh, we're gonna try and keep that similar pace, the a little bit more of a, a fast paced, cut the fluff kind of a. Uh, show like we had last week so we're gonna see how it works out we'll see how it goes um but let's get right into it if, if justin stops messing with my cams here we're gonna start with cord and we're gonna make our way around cord and justin marty and then ron unless justin is not back for whatever reason and then he'll just miss his turn oh 
So Corden, first question goes to you. We're going to start with our mulligan round. We have three questions in the mulligan. The uh, All three of these questions actually are Battlegrounds questions. I was going to, you know, kind of split the Battlegrounds questions up throughout the, the show, but they all three just kind of flowed nice and neatly between each other. So we're going to put them all up front. So that's what we're going to do. So question number one, starting off. Well, I forgot to click the button. There's the button. Button. Let's talk about the new content coming to BGs. It's been a little stale for a while. Um, you've seen you've seen some people in the Battlegrounds community complaining. They've lost the drive. They've lost the itch to play a bit, considering you know the lack of content that they had for a while. It even got Savich, you know, playing in top twenty legend and standard, which is not something we thought we would ever see again. So my question, starting with you, Corridan, is, is the new Battlegrounds content enough to reinvigorate the scene, the Battleground scene? Yes, I think it's going to be enough to reinvigorate it until everyone gets bored of it again. This is a lot different than when they introduced the Dark Moon Fair, where they had basically prizes that was available to everyone. You could get into a match and you could just not have Quill Bores, so you literally are just playing old school Battlegrounds, which is just going to be extremely boring again. Not to mention that Blood Gems are cool, but it's going to take a while f before people can actually utilize them. I don't think going like straight Quill Bores is the answer. You're going to have to do like different builds and things like that. So it's going to take a while, which might drag it out a little bit. But because it's just based around a minion type and not the board as it was in Dark Moon Fair, I think it's going to reinvigorate for a little and then just, just going to probably die out even faster than it did before. Wow. Okay. Uh, Justin. Yeah, I'm I'm excited for this. I <laughs> I feel like I'm part of the audience that we're complaining about that doesn't play Battlegrounds anymore. Uh, so this this patch seems anything but quill boring. I have no idea how to do any of these tribes, partly because I'm not good at the game, but uh, I don't know. Uh, if, if anything doesn't work, then we can always just blame Boar. That, that now has a double meaning. I love it. Yeah, exactly. There you go, Marty. Yeah, so now the person who has never really played Battlegrounds can speak. <laughs> this will be fun. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think just, you know, spicing things up with a new tribe and a new mechanic is really fun. We've done these kinds of mechanics before with the prizes, and people really like that. And they're also looking to doing things similar to that, which seems to have excited the community a lot. So I do think that, you know, doing this every month or two is going to really keep things fresh. Yeah, I don't I don't did did they did they say they're they're going to add more content at a quicker pace or is that So what happens with Battlegrounds is that it follows the same linear line that like expansions do. So essentially when there's the expansion and then the Battlegrounds is the next big one, and then we're going to have the mini set and then after the mini set they're going to repatch Battlegrounds with different minions and and probably a couple new heroes and stuff like that. So they'll rejig it they're, they're uh, again to set, right? So like yeah. Battleground like we get expansion and then Battlegrounds get something a month later and then we get mini set and then Battlegrounds get something a month later, right? Exactly. Just to try and keep it alive but i gotcha. mean obviously there's a lot right. more with standard expansions than a battleground one yeah gotcha they have well. suggested that they're looking to doing more things for battlegrounds to freshen up the content yeah. so i do think we can expect them to add more events and things as time goes on because okay. they've realized that things get stale faster and you need to yeah kind of update it a bit more and switch things up to shake up the meta, easy so. marty no rambling come on now uh -oh. <laughs> uh -oh. hold on hold on Corden did interrupt <laughs> and take half of my time the I question was asked <laughs> posed the question ron you haven't asked the question yet oh yeah yeah uh the question is it enough to reinvigorate the scene absolutely it's enough to reinvigorate the scene this is fantastic all right listen uh these blood gems are basically just bananas. I don't know if you guys know this, but I've been on record as being a very strong supporter of bananas. It's awesome. I'm here for it. Uh, I hope quill bores are going to be just as fun as, and exciting as they look. All righty. So we're going to take... So we're going to take... Hold on. Time out. We got to time out for a second. I can hear... I heard, I'm, I heard myself... It must have been coming from someone's computer. Anyways, 
Um, we're going to take that discussion of quill bores and we're going to talk about them a little more, specifically blood gems and and quill bores first. So let's uh, let's go back to Ron. Let's let's kind of go in reverse here. Uh, Ron, Marty, Justin, and then Corridan. And let's talk about blood gems. So, Ron, are blood gems going to be good enough to make Quillbore as a tier one build? They will be so good. I'm talking like oppressively good. All right, people are gonna hate these Quillbores soon. Because <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Um, but <laughs> I think I think they'll be good. I don't know if they'll be necessarily tier one. Uh, they look interesting and fun. There's a lot of like cool things that you can do with them. It's not just like the plus stats. You get like some additional things with the rest of your minions too that kind of have interplay with the. The blood gems whether or not it's going to be like highly competitive probably needs a little bit more like uh extra things that are you know better keywords in general than just piles of stats but it'll be okay it'll be decently competitive tier one i don't think so all right marty all right so blood gems i think that they're a very unique um mechanic i think that they wouldn't be doing it if they didn't think it would have an impact on the meta as we've seen over and over with normal card expansions you know even with the last one you know in uh with the baron's expansion people thought that it was a lower powered expansion and that just didn't happen to be the case you know we're seeing a lot of powerful cards still and i see them doing the same thing in battlegrounds where they're not afraid to push boundaries a little bit and then nerf later so there's no way they would do this without making sure that blood gems would be viable and have an impact. All right, Justin. <laughs> From one blind faith and the devs to another. Yeah, I mean, I agree with Ron. These these don't seem like they have quite, like, you, you could go elementals. You can go dragons. There's a clearly synergistic comp for them. It, it doesn't quite seem the same as this. Like, a lot of them early when you get blood gems, especially the bonuses for them, can be pretty pretty big stats comparatively, like uh, whatever, an extra 1-1 one, one on something, it's only a 2-2, two, two. it's 50% increase in stats, but late game they seem to fall off a bit, uh, and as well, they, they, there's just not this whole synergy for having everything Quillbore, they seem to be more like complementing other, like a Menagerie comp or something like that, or, or other types of comps. The thing I'm really excited for, as, as others have noted, is that there's one called Bonker, and it, and it bonks. <laughs> Bonker's the best one. It, I mean, it do be bonking. Yeah. It do be I mean, <laughs> this kind of seems like uh, when Pirates first came out and people would force the golden, like, four-star one that, that grows when it <laughs> for other things that are gold, just the synergy it had. I mean, this isn't quite the same thing, but it's it's four-star, and it, it's bonking. It bonking. Gordon, do you be bonking with the cool boars? Uh, yeah, I'd be bonking. I, I bonk. Um, I agree that cool boars are early on going to be... Uh, good. There are a lot of pivot points where they have just created things such as you can actually like dump your blood gems onto early game minions and then take them off and give them to your later game minions like Bonk. So as Justin was saying that minions are going to be an early or quill boards might be a better early to mid game. I actually think their closing potential in the game is going to be extremely good. There are some high tier quill boards out there that there's literally one where it's a wind fury divine shield frenzy gain a divine shield so it literally just gets a divine shield at the end of the turn and it's a four seven so it's pretty much always going to be able to be utilizing that frenzy especially with blood gems at the end of the game as well there's a brand new one where it's every time you spend three gold get a blood gem apm pirates is a very very strong thing right now with uh captain um captain husk or Oh my goodness. Um, I can't remember him. The captain that gives you a gold. I can't remember his name. But blood gems are going to be able to enable better things in the meta right now that I don't think they're going to be their own final seven boards of quill boards. It's just not going to happen at the end of the day. Alrighty. Keeping with the theme of quill boards, um, we have one final mulligan question, and this one is... Uh, about specific quill boards. So Justin and Corden brought up a couple of specific minions. Uh, let's see if they stick with those minions as an answer to this question. Uh, let's actually just start right back with Justin. Justin, which quill bore will see the first nerf? Oh man, I haven't looked through these enough. Uh, uh, 
<laughs> wow. Nerf, I, I don't even feel like I know how nerfs happen. But the one that came to mind... <laughs> uh, well, you make going off. Okay, okay. Uh, the Bonker is pretty cool, but no, I, I think it's the one that makes your blood gems give an extra plus three plus three. It's only three star, so it seems pretty reasonable that you're just going to get a random blood gem uh, just for the first few turns. You just you gotta buy a minion when you're on three gold, when you're on six gold. So you'll probably just stumble into some quibbles, and then that seems like a pretty big power spike if if your first turn on on tavern three you're able to get one of those, and then suddenly you're Blood quill that blood gem that you may have saved gives an extra plus four plus four. That's a lot of stats for that early in the game. Uh, so <laughs> thirty seconds having to choose something <laughs> on the spot. There's my answer, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> now listen, uh, I may I may have strategically picked you first because you were in the lead, and because I knew none of the four of you were prepared to answer this question. Ronnie Battlegrounds, <laughs> what's your thoughts? <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm just going to have to go with the one that has the most keywords. Mega, well, I mean, if you get a gold, it yeah. becomes a mega wind fury. Divine shield, frenzy, get another divine shield. And you keep piling blood gems on top of that. Uh, maybe that's your only quill board minion in your entire comp because it's just good in the late game and you stick some buffs on it. Maybe it's part of an entire quill board comp that actually gives you more blood gems or more payoffs for the gems like you're increasing how many times this gets buffed or whatever but this minion it's it's a lot of stats and it's a pile of keywords and it could just be really busted at some point so uh, i think it has certainly one of the highest potentials to be a nerfed card in the future i don't know if any quill board gets nerfed but if there is one my money's on that one all righty um let's go with Corden here uh what I actually think will get a nerf is typically things that are six tier six or tier five, but usually the ones getting a nerf because they're the ones with the greatest, um, I guess, they, they deal the most damage on the board. It's going to be Captain Flat Tusk. Back to what I was saying with APM Pirates, and there is a lot of heroes and minions that are really good at abusing gold. Now, this one is after you spend three gold, gain a blood gem. There's pirates that literally you buy and you sell for three gold. There's demons where you buy, you sell for three gold. Um, Millhouse is cheaper. He buys for two and just the pirates with Captain Hog, um, Hogger. There's going to be ways to abuse something like that with being able to get so many stats, especially for people who are really good at APM and very fast with it and know what they're doing. I think that one's going to be, and I, it might not be the actual text, but it's a nine, six, which is pretty good stats on a regular tiered off minion to begin with it doesn't die to a lot of things and dealing six damage can literally just win a game or knock somebody out super early when you discover off a of tier five all right marty marty you're muted man i'm so bad at this <laughs> unmuting thing <laughs> i'm gonna go by uh what Corden said here you know aim for a tier five tier six minion and the one that stuck out to me was Agam Thorn Curse. Okay, after a blood gem is played on this, give a friendly minion of each minion type plus one plus one. So this is clearly a, a menagerie card, right? Mm -hmm. But because uh, blood gems are going to be pushed, people are going to find a way to get to tier five early again, play this card, and then they're going to use the one quill bore that takes all your blood gems and puts it on a friendly minion instead. Mm -hmm. Put it on this and then buff all their minions by like six or seven right and that's going to be insane in one turn and you're going to be set for like two or three turns and then you can get way ahead so i can see this being pushed to tier six at some point i think it's going to be the first one to get hit i do think that Corden has a point where the apm pirates you know that other one that buys three gold can be mm. good but i think this is better all righty that is the end of our battlegrounds questions you all can take a big deep sigh taking a deep breath sigh of relief no more battlegrounds for the rest of the show i enjoy battlegrounds yeah well, yeah quite evident compared to I'm everyone sad. else here <laughs> your, your opponents do not <laughs> that's, I wonder that's why their fault like <laughs> the points. i wonder why you like it so much uh 
I just I, enjoy maybe, it. I maybe know. that's why he's in the lead right now. He maybe. Got, yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's move on to face of trade. We have four questions in the face of trade round. As a um, recap of the rules of face of trade, the four of them will be given a statement, not a question, but a statement, so it will end in a period. And they will be given the option of going face, meaning they agree with the statement, or trade, meaning they disagree with the statement. Um, Marty has not gone first, so Marty will go first in our first face or trade question. And our first face or trade question is very, very straightforward and very, very simple. So Marty B, face or trade? Gaby. Gaby? Gaby. Gaby. Marty B. Uh, is this a trick question? <laughs> I mean, you gotta back this kid, right? So you go face on him all the way. Like, I mean, God, this is so awkward because someone's gonna take this as an innuendo. So I really hope. Okay, innuendos aside, let's pretend this is completely G-rated. Uh, you have to support, you know, the the French kid. He's been an insane player for so long, and he deserves to be a GM. And it's good to see, you know, younger people stepping in into the competitive scene and really doing well. And I think this was a long time coming. So they're going to have a lot of success in GM, and I back them 100% in there. All right. Ron. Gaby. Uh, Gabby? Is it, Ga is it Gabby? I thought it was Gabby. Yeah, yeah. time. Yes. I am so sorry. I, I've, never heard, I've never heard his name out loud, so I read it as Gaby. Nice. No, I didn't. I didn't um, watch actually because I was writing a final paper all day yesterday until midnight. So I we we JB. So I didn't watch. My apologies. Is that why Diamond? Is that why Diamond gave me the uh, the the yeah. reaction there? Oh, it's the big I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, Ron, well, uh, in in any case, uh, face. I mean, I was always going to say face anyway, right? But I I literally can't uh, pick another option. This kid is is unreal he's what 15 years old just an absolute prodigy at hearthstone uh, i gotta quote frodan's tweet about him right eight years old he plays his first hearthstone game 10 years old 10 years old this kid hits rank one legend and then at 15 obviously he's the youngest master store champ and a grandmaster uh it's just uh, absolutely unreal i i can't think of any other words that really sum it up the, i'm blown away by how good this kid is and he's super entertaining uh you've got the the gab jams going on like it, he's he's fun to watch he clearly really cares about hearthstone and uh you can tell like how the wheels are turning in his head like as he's calculating out turns and just like the level of his play seems so far beyond where everyone else is at it's it's inspiring and it's something to really uh, even though he's only like 15, he's someone to, to try to emulate as much as possible because he's a really impressive player. I'm excited to see where his career takes him. Corden. Gabby. 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 Face. Gabby. Gabby. Gabby Dot. Um, face. Um, pretty much everything. The 15 year old, I was, uh, I watched, but I didn't know the storyline of Gabby and, you know, how young he was when he started playing and everything. I even read a story where he was playing an open in Germany and they disqualified him because he was 13 years old and he was actually winning. So he went through and he got disqualified because he was too young to play in that open or something like that on tweets. And just going through it, watching Twitter come together over one person was awesome to see. And he played amazingly against Viper, who is by no means an easy player. So it just goes to show that gabby deserves to be moving into gm and i think is almost guaranteed to with the with the olgamar win that he what he got in points i don't think anyone can catch him now from De, from delaria next time so uh face all the way and i think people are even saying he's like sort of the next amnesiac which is pretty cool to see somebody with that style and another young young savage coming out so it's cool now that's a name i haven't heard in a while uh justin I can't wait to see JB at Delarion. Uh, anyways. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, there, there's only one option in the face or face segment. But uh, so you guys have talked about all how insane he is. The only thing question is what happens next. Because he's going to be a grandmaster for season two. 
And as I'm sure everyone here knows, Mako especially, given how much he follows the competitive scene, Worlds is determined, the placements, by who wins Grandmaster. It's two spots from each reason. Who wins Season 1 and who wins Season 2. So there is the dream that, that all Banky almost lived last time of promote Season 1, win GM Season 2, go to Worlds, win Worlds. So you might be saying to yourself, hey, wait, there's 15 other EU Grandmasters. They're all very good. What are the odds that Gabby can win that and then go to the Worlds in a 16-person field and, and win that as well? Wouldn't that be 116 times 116? Wouldn't that be very low and possible? Well, that's where you're wrong because it's not random. Here's what's going to happen. So Gabby, now everyone knows how insane he is. He's going to develop his own company, start an industry of selling deck lineups. He's going to make it rich. He's not even going to need competitive earnings anymore. But then, but then he's going to have the real brain juice when he wins GM season two, which I mean, he'll, he'll probably get there. RNG, you know, what I mean, he'll go to worlds. He'll sell everyone the one and then he'll make a lineup that counters the lineup he sold to everyone else. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our next 2021 world champion, it will be none other than Gabby Incorporated. Lineup salesman. Are you going to? Pretty sure I didn't that? even hear a face or trade there. He's no, uh, I yes, still don't know what he's doing. Face. Well, Always is, face. Is, Ga <laughs> is Gabby Inc. going to be going to the moon? Uh, who knows? I mean, yeah. if they if they want lineups up there, he could very well get there. Gotcha. All righty, let's move on and let's talk about a uh, THL team. Uh, we're gonna, we're going to talk about THL here for a second. Let's talk about a THL team who has. Historically, speaking of timeout, NPH Disco, thank you for the sub. Now, following this sub, he says, Disco says, I don't understand what they were saying, but I assume they were telling me to sub to the channel. That's exactly what Justin was saying, just in a very long-worded, roundabout way of saying it. But speaking of you and your team, let's talk about NPH here. Uh, a team that seems to do super well in the regular season, but fails to compete in the playoffs, uh, almost like a worse version of F2L last season. Let's um, let's talk about NPH, and let's start with Ron here. Uh, Ron, face or trade, this is the season of NPH. I mean, you phrased it the right way. We're going face, boys. <laughs> uh, listen... I know that NPH always looks incredible in the regular season and always seems to fall apart when it comes to the playoffs, but I really believe in this version of the NPH hero team. I think Carvalho is incredibly good in the one seed and agent pwe your mom kid you can always trust them to do well disco's on fire like he frequently is uh stashed in you know the four seed just cleaning up and quaz historically just like always a one of the highest value five seeds that we have in thl um you know unless uh unless moarks are involved it, it, we don't need to talk about that, though. Um, I, I think that NPH will be very well positioned this season. Um, and at the very least, I'm calling it now, they are finally getting that playoff win, that elusive playoff win that has avoided them for so long. They are getting it this season. And I wouldn't be surprised to see them take down the entire championship. Ooh, all righty. Marty. You know, I'm going to go trade. I think NPH is going to fall again. Okay. I know right. things are different. You have Carvalho at the top. And, you know, PWE and your bum kid have always been around. They're great. Disco is also great. You know, Quaz, like Ron said, he's a huge value 5C. But these guys, I mean, someone's got to say it. They've fallen. They've collapsed so many times. Um, How many how many hockey fans do we have here? Do you guys remember the, uh, the 2013 Maple Leafs? That was peak... Toronto Maple Leafs, okay? There's uh, a funny meme within the NHL. It was 4-1, uh, okay? These guys finally had a shortened season, which meant they couldn't get to the 60-game mark in an 80-game season to collapse. But, so instead, during that shortened 48-game season, they did it in the playoffs against a huge rival, okay? And with less than 10 minutes left, they were up 4-1, okay? And then lost 
5-4 in overtime about 15 minutes later. And we're going to see something similar. No pros here. They'll get to the playoffs, and it's going to look good. And then they'll choke. And then they're going to have to blow it up. PWE is going to take a break with Pasca, and they're going to co-captain. And they're going to have to rebuild the entire team and take a few seasons off before they can come back as actual powerhouses once again. All righty. You have a whole plan laid out for them. Justin, do you agree with that plan? That sounded very evil master plan. I'm just very confused. Who is this Who is this team? Uh, is this related to the Bank Yugi fan club? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. Uh, anyways, I, I mean, I, get, I guess I'll go face as well. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, no pros here, top of hero series, uh, doing well on points per week despite having an early buy in Legacy as well. They uh, Last season, they did not quite make playoffs, uh, but that was just to conserve, store their power. They, they, they had always had the team on the cusp previously, so a, a season of, of tactical PR management to, to really spike their roster this time around, there, there's nothing stopping this team uh, except themselves. And uh, the, the, the good thing is that uh, I, I don't think they're going to stop themselves this time either, not, not with the power of uh, Bank Yugi on their side. Or right. at least in their name. <laughs> in, in the name. Gordon. Yeah, um, I got to go face on this one as well. I think NPH is going to have a fantastic storied season. I agree. I think they could probably go all the way to the finals. Uh, who knows if they're going to win it? Um, the reason is because of those bottom three seeds, the three, four, five. That's where you need to get your wins. I think that's where everybody is realizing in THL today, your ones and twos are pretty much gimmies. They are your strongest players. They are the go-tos, your, the ones you can lean on. When you see Disco in a four, who's 3-0 and right now, that means he's putting in the work and he's getting the wins. Quaz is a steal at five, as always. But not only that, every single one of these guys in their match history is positive. There's only one who's not, and it's Agent PWE, but that's only because he's five and seven. So the fact that he's still a five and seven and the rest of the team is still positive in their match records is just goes to show that they're going the distance and they're winning those game threes when they absolutely need to. All right. Hey, give me one second. Hey, is she okay? Uh oh. Aw. Uh... This is concerning. Yep. So how's everyone's night? Man, why you got to bring up the 4-1? Why you got to be like that? Because it is a timeless meme, okay? For anyone who doesn't know, like, it's probably... For anyone who doesn't know, know and didn't yeah, listen to me recap it just, just two minutes ago. <laughs> I, I feel it's like... One of the biggest... This Hockey feels like this game. feels like the um the community episode where Troy leaves to go pick up the pizza and comes back and everything's on fire. Yeah. 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 This is exactly I I walked away <laughs> for like 3 seconds because uh one of yeah, the darkest timeline. Thank you. Yeah. The the, the I couldn't tell if it was the cat or the dog that was like was making some loud like gagging sounds and it sounded like it was choking or something. And it was just, the cat was just coughing up a fur ball, which was disgusting. But I was like, "Oh, someone's dying in here." Anyways, just a normal Monday afternoon in the Mako household. Exactly, exactly. Uh, let's talk about priests. Oh, they are they are shelling out all of the points here <laughs> for Ron. I don't know what happened. <laughs> It's almost as if I just said that uh, NPH was going to win the whole thing, and then the NPH crew gives me points. Love to see it. Oh, wow. NPH is just showing up. That's what you got to do. You just got to suck it up. Molstar, her, Molstar has been non ex Oh, never mind. There's Molstar. Okay. See, this is what know. happens. I missed I missed everything. Yes, Molstar. We're going to talk about Priest. Um, so first thing, uh, hold on. Let me see if Kel's in the chat. Okay, Kel's not in the chat, so he's not going to talk shit here. We're going to talk about Priest. Um, last week, I said Priest was a bait. This week, everyone banned Priest in competitive play. So um, I guess I ate my words a little bit in a way. I'm not really sure yet. Um, but let's see what you guys think. Face or trade? Um, let's start here with... Uh, let's start with Marty. Face or trade? Priest is a must-ban in competitive play. Great. Trade. This is an easy trade. With the rise of Mage 
and Mage becoming, you know, a huge threat again. We saw how it did in Masters Tour. We've been seeing in THL how popular it is now, and that beats Priest. So you're not banning Priest anymore. You're just banning the oppressive decks. Priest is not as oppressive as we thought it would be. So you don't, you're not trying to ban it. You can even target it sometimes. All right, Justin. Yeah, Priest had a 70% adjusted ban rate uh, this past week in the Masters Tour, and that's 70% of the time when the opponent had it in a lineup that it was banned, rather than, obviously, four decks you would expect, just 25% if it were random. So uh, it seems <laughs> that's among the highest <laughs> rates ever <laughs> in history of, of, of any meta. So uh, there's never anything that's a must-ban, because people can always get creative and try to make counters for it, but this is as close to a must-ban as there ever have been. The thing I'm really interested, uh, the thing I think that Priest has right now, it's an image problem. It's going back to the Galakron Priest days when people just said, oh, it's random BS, it's generation, the games take forever, I don't want to play against it, it's all right, so I'll just ban it. You know what we need? We need a new Hearthstone competitive mode where if both players queue up to the game and it's a Priest mirror in a tournament play, they also have a second Priest de deck built. They concede the game, they queue with the second Priest deck. It's 29 cards the same, but there's a Nas Dormu. Problem solved. Everyone loves Priest. No one bans Priest. They just want their Nas Dormu Priest mirrors. These 30 turn games where you're playing 10 cards in a turn. Seth it going burr <laughs> at 15 seconds per turn. Then no one would ban Priest. I, I, think, yeah. I think what you're saying is Nas Dormu that Nas Dormu just, just needs to be a required card in all priest decks. Just in uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that's pretty close. Yeah, yeah uh, you okay. you took the words right out from my mouth. I couldn't have said it yeah. better myself. You should get a point up for that. Yeah, in fact. I think I think Marty has a good point. Was that a face or a trade though? Uh, I mean, it, I, I answer face for everything. So yeah, uh, unfortunately, there is not this not normal mode. So uh, you should probably that's ban true, it that's true. In, in the meantime. Uh, Ron, uh, Justin, did you literally say it's not a must ban, and then you're also saying you went face that? That I said that if this matter. isn't a must ban, then what is? Uh, fair, fair enough. Fair enough. In the, the highest. Uh, you know, I'm you know I'm going face on this one. Oh, yeah. um, look, I actually prior to Masters Tour, if you asked me this question, I probably would have said trade. Um, because I tried to design a lineup that at least soft targeted priest, and I didn't plan on banning priests at all through Masters Tour. And you know, maybe it's because I'm terrible at the game. I'm sure mainly it's that. You know, I but I went three and six in Masters Tour, and almost every time my beat up priest lineup ran into priest, priest beat me up. Uh, priest is disgusting right now in a lot of ways. There's a there's a good reason why it just had a massive ban rate at Masters Tour and is going to continue that way for the foreseeable future until we see like mini set or something because just you can't effectively target priest. Uh, like Warlock is like the hardest target, but there's Mage does well against it, but it's not enough because Priest can still generate and heal and generate some more heal and then use those cards to generate some more cards and go nuts. They also have basically a Reno heal too in Samuro and Apotheosis. So if you even get them like close to where they're almost dead, but you didn't quite finish them off because you're setting it up and you have even like a couple minions on the board, oops. They have seven mana, so I guess they're back at full health now. Like, it's it's so incredibly difficult to beat Priest consistently that I think it's just the overall much, much better strategy to ban it. So we got to go face here. We got to say it's a must ban. It's just the smarter strategy. If Gabby thinks it's the play, if Viper thinks it's the play, they designed the lineups for themselves and then they both banned Priest. Even though Gabby knew that Viper hadn't even, like, played Priest, did he still ban it and it got banned? Yeah, it's a ban. You gotta ban that class. Sounds like you're saying Priest is a fan of edging. <laughs> Corden. Yeah, this is a face for sure. Um, just looking around, I was looking on Twitter again because that's really all I do at work. And there's two guys that I was watching. Wicked Good has a ton of statistics on Ogumar, And Priest was over 50% banned in all of the matches that were played. And the next closest was Rush Warrior at a 10%. That really speaks in waves what people are thinking about priests and then the other person that i completely agree with is itachi or not none other than itachi who says targeting priest is silly 
You can't target Priest. You just, you can't beat it. As Ron said, he brought an entire lineup to try and beat Priest, and Priest beat him. So there's just no way you can really beat it unless you're taking it the nine miles into a Priest mirror. And really, nobody wants to see a Priest mirror in any sense. Ban Priest, get rid of it. Not only just for the, it's not a powerful deck, it's just a long, drawn out thing. And Itachi had another good point, which I'm going to say is, it's a specific ban. He said, if you're banning someone who's tired, don't ban the priest. Make them play it and make them make the mistakes. Smart. Smart plays. Yeah. Um, we have one more question. Last question. Back to THL. We're going to talk legacy. We're going to talk about a specific matchup. And some players on these teams are on the show right now. And it just so happens to be a uh, um, very high profile match i guess you could say with both teams tied at 48 points which is tied for second place in the gold division in legacy so let's talk about dad legend let's talk about flame pimps face or trade um marty v would you like to go first or last i'm making sure i'm unmuted this time um i've been going first the last two times i think so uh let's save best for last all right Corden. Face your trade. Dad Legend takes home the W over the Flame Pimps. Um, hmm. I'm going to have to go face on this one Um, for a few reasons. The first reason is because I'm playing Dad Legend for the first time in Hero, so I feel like I have to have a little bit of allegiance to the Dad Legends of, of all across THL. Uh, but not only that is that um, your mom kid playing in a 3-0 and and Icer is going to be the difference match there. And both of them playing in the two seed at a heavy... I've seen your mom kid. I don't know much about Icer, so maybe that's my bias about it. But I think your mom kid playing as, as well as he is right now and also playing as well as he is over in uh, No Pro Series that we just talked about, I got to give him the edge there. And I really think that's where it's going to come down to, to the final is it's going to be an extremely close match, but it's really going to be a close, tight one. I think those two seeds, you're going to see a first loss on one of the... Well, you have to see a first loss on one of those guys, but I think your mom kid at the style and the complexity and, and competition he's playing at right now, I think he's going to win it out. I think it's going to be a right down the middle, but it's going to be Dad Legend taking it home. All righty, Ron. Uh, you know what? I I really wanted to just pick whoever was going to be the face option and say face, but uh, first, a small correction. They're actually in red, not gold. Uh, oh, but second... Okay. I <laughs> I, I I believe I have to say trade on this one. I'm giving it to the Flame Pimps because I really believe in this team. Um, they're they're on fire, honestly. Uh, Boolean has like completely caught fire. Uh, he was already like a pretty good pro series player, and this guy is playing in the four seed in Legacy and just lighting everyone up. I think they have one of the biggest value five seeds um in Didal at the the bottom part and goose 447 pr in the three seed he started 0 and three and i cannot believe that a player of his caliber will not turn it around taco cat happens to also in the one seed for flame pimps be like a constant presence in extremely high rank ladder and Icer has made a dominant return to uh, THL starting off his season 3-0. and So you've got two players that are already on fire and then two players with like incredible pedigree in the one and three that have had rough seasons to start. They're already at 48 points. You look at who they're playing against in Dad Legend. Zabe is amazing. Your mom kid is incredible. Um, but... Desharmo, Blue Spartan, and Hast, I think, are all getting losses this week. I think it's anyone's game in the one and two, um, but I think it's all Flame Pimps in the three, four, five. I like how these players are lined up a little bit better. I think they're understanding the meta. Lo Justin. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've honestly just been waiting to, for a chance to, to use that feature, and Ron. Ron, Ron set it up perfectly. <laughs> Justin, what are your thoughts? Yeah, well, I looked at these teams. They both look pretty strong. So I asked Goose if they were going to win, and he said, uh, he responded to me back with something I couldn't pronounce, and it was in Turkish for faith. Uh, and then I asked him whether he's Turkish. And then he, he 
responded me back with another thing in Turkish, which translated according to Google Translate of "We will beat the father legend." Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna have to go. Uh, I'm gonna have to say trade and and go what with the flame fuck tips. What are you talking about right now? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But we will what beat is... the father legend is what Goose told me, and I'm very <laughs> interested in that. <laughs> I'm I'm only the messenger. Don't don't shoot me. Remind <laughs> me how none of this has been rambling. I, I don't know what he's talking about right now. You're making no sense. I, I did a lot of research before dirt? the show. You, you guys you guys just the, aren't on the get level. The fuck out of here, Marty. All right, all right, all right. So, um, I'm also gonna trade, and I think Ron hit a lot of the points, but he's not giving some of the players on Flame Pimps enough credit here. Really, um, seeing the rise of Boolean over the last few seasons, because I've been tracking stats for a while, it's really incredible. This player has really turned things around. You know, they had started as a mediocre player in pro, uh, started becoming, started turning even, and now really has just become a value seed in all different kinds of series. And, you know, this 3-0 and comes to no surprise to me whatsoever. You know, that's a steal of the four. I don't think Blue Spartan really has a chance. Nothing against Blue Spartan, but Boolean is just way under right here at this moment. Goose going 0-3, that's not normal, okay? He's definitely going to get those wins back. I can't see this guy at least finishing even on the season, and I can very easily see it starting against Ducharmo here. Icer 3-0. and Like Ron said, this is no surprise. You know, coming back... I don't agree in him using the term on fire because he is called Icer, even though they're on flame pimps. But I do think they're an excellent player. Really, the only seed that I think is a toss up right now, and this is, you know, just no knock at all on either side, is the one seed between Taco Cat and Ana Zabe. And that's because every single one seed matchup is a toss up. So I think it's actually going to go 4 1 flame pimps over Dad Legend. And flame pimps are going to pretty much settle as a top team in their conference. All righty. Well, you, you, you redeemed yourself some points there, but uh, fell just short of getting into our dual rounds. Uh, like when other people are rambling and I don't have time. <laughs> well, I, I didn't cut, I didn't cut you short. I didn't cut you. Short. I made sure to cut short just for you. Yeah. <laughs> well, no see, rewards for that. I, unfortunately. I think, I think what you should take from this though, is that, while you did do a shorter response, you got three points from that shorter response because it was uh, you got all your points out of, at, up front. Um, I'm not, nope, Rice Bowl, you're not doing this shit again. I already called the end of the round. We're not doing this <laughs> <laughs> I am getting gammed again, especially knowing the topics coming up because we, this we is talked, a bit of a personal one to we've, me. So. We've talked about this before. <laughs> if you're going to do it, then do it before they're done. <laughs> I'm just saying, this, this, no, I know. that final question was a bit personal, so it's going to hurt to miss out. Ugh, I know. Um, all right, so wow. uh, Marty B, Justin, say goodbye. They will be back at the end. Um, yeah, hey, Justin, you're you're unmuted, bud. Now you are, sorry. Nope, now you are. <laughs> He looks a little upset. He's spaghetti. Um, all right. Marty B and Justin, they are spamming tip Bob, are going to take a bit of a hiatus. They will be back. Uh, we're going to do a dual round between Corden and Ron. We have three questions left. Ron, uh, Corden is going to try, and uh, we have a, a bit of a uh, uh, a bit of a uh, what, what would you call it? A storyline here. Corden is going for the second ever two in a row champion while uh ron is just trying not to end up in second place like he always does <laughs> so let's uh let's reset our points back to zero we're gonna start off with corden because he was in the lead and because he won last week so the double up there so we'll cordon and then ron and then ron will go first the second question let's start off with pro series and we've already talked about spagoy once this season i think in episode one we're going to talk about them again because they're struggling quite a bit but they are a co they are a a full-fledged amateur organization so i want to hear from you guys um starting with cordon what does spagoy need to get into a playoff position 
Well, I mean, really, it's it's kind of obvious you need to start winning, right? I mean, that's just that's that's rude. That's that's rude. I'm sorry. No, I mean they are they are a really good team. I I think going zero and three is extremely difficult for their four and five seeds. So even though I'm crassly saying they need to start winning, I think you need to not take the three losses to heart and really focus up because once those losses pile down on you, it's extremely hard to dig yourself back up and find a way to win continuously i think no glocko is an extremely super strong high class player and i think these guys are going to pull together and really like this is going to be a huge test even brushy tuna's team i mean they're three points aside so this is a test of you know very similar not skilled people because pro is just all over the place but a very similar statted in the standings team so it's gonna need this week to really prove that they can actually pull themselves back up from the rut all righty ron all right let me start off just by saying uh i'm i'm really excited uh, by the script for tonight because we've got Justin with the tactical throw we've got Marty getting scammed again and we got me heading for that second place let's go we're all on brand baby we got, we got a but, uh... writers over here <laughs> <laughs> but um to answer the question what does I need to get into a playoff position well that's an easy one to answer get a new roster um, no I'm, I'm, I'm not uh, I'm not gonna go that hard it's actually a really good Christ, team <laughs> Uh, it, it is a really good team. I'm serious about that. Like, I'm surprised to see Swagoy not doing as well so far to start the season, but Pro is just full of insanely strong players. I have faith in Glocko and Jared, um, Linthesis, Cookie Monster, and Edelweiss. I, I can't see an actual weakness on this team at all. I think maybe it's just a settle down a little bit you know um take it one step at a time play some practice matches with your amongst yourselves try to get a little bit more comfortable with the meta uh bring some stuff maybe that isn't even like the premium uh brings just because it's more comfortable for you i happen to play against cookie monst in aspirant uh just like last week and he brought shaman and he beat me up with it and guess what so we'll go is playing Brushy Tuna this week, and I'm playing Cookie Monst again. He'll probably bring Shaman, and he'll probably beat me up again. So, you know, there you go. Just flip it around, start, pick up that momentum, play the trash team, Brushy Tuna, uh, gain some confidence, and you're moving on. Easy. All righty. Let's uh, move from pro to wild. Um, Marty, I know, is sad that he's not in on this one. Um, we're going to talk about... Uh, Wilds <clears throat> should have been MVP, probably player last season, Triple J, um, who is in checks. I checked because we were going to talk about him here next. So, Ron, next question is going to start with you. Triple J is uh, finished last season undefeated, and this season is currently one and two. So my question, Ron, is has the mighty fallen – or not Triple J, Six J. Sorry, I was thinking. I was about six. to tell you no, 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 uh, yeah. to put some respect on yeah, that name no, and give three my, more J's my there. There's something. There's like a YouTube channel called Triple J. It's a music channel. That's that's my bad. Six um, J. So has the mighty fallen, or is this just the redemption arc? Um, I, I don't believe it. I don't believe that the mighty have fallen here. Six J literally went completely undefeated in wild last season and then also destroyed everyone in the octathlon in the wild portion uh it happens you know where you just have like a few bad breaks and you lose a couple games this isn't mid-season you know where 6j is is sporting like a 33 percent win rate it's you know, one game is the difference between a 66 percent win rate and a 33 percent win rate here um absolutely just an incredibly strong player one of the best players in the entire wild series and i i completely expect that they're going to turn things around uh maybe those are the only two losses we see from 6j through the entire season i'm calling it right now us max for 6j they're still a monster let's see you do it all righty gordon um 
No, I, I don't think the Mighty has fallen at all. There's definitely going to be a redemption arc here. Um, based off what Ron said, he's, yeah, the 33% doesn't say anything. The one and two, it's a five and eight record. One more win or something along the line. It's a completely different number. Seeing it this early, I don't think it deals justification. Not only that, he's on the team with, well, literally the one of the best, I think, or all of the best guys in Wild right now with literally three members of the team being three and oh. I don't think there's a way the teammates are going to let 6J go down like that. Um, they're going to pull him up. They're going to definitely do everything you can, or he's going to do it himself. Um, I've been on cast with 6J. I seen how smart he is in wild, his preparation. I don't think this is any, any way to like throw the flag prematurely. Mm -hmm. I think 6J is going to be completely fine. You know, even gods bleed. <laughs> even gods bleed. <laughs> Beautiful way to put that. I love it. Um, okay, we have one final question for you. I had to, it's a pretty lengthy question, so I had to uh, double it up here on our screen. Last question of the night. Um, I, it, it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna allow some rambling on this one because this is a, uh, this is a bit of a, a thinker in terms of THL topics. Okay. Um, so we're gonna start with Corridan. So the the caliber of players that have been entering THL has steadily increased over the years. Um, you know, as THL has gotten more, more exposure, and you know the player players in THL have just naturally gotten better. So my question, and we'll start with Corridan, has the player caliber in THL gotten to a point where it is harder for new players to join? Yes. Um, I think it has. And this coming from a person who was a new player two years ago, I started playing in pro for the first two seasons, which is probably the biggest mistake I could have done, which is rude to say, but my team was a bunch of guys who thought we were really good. And we soon, soon found we were not as high class as we thought, and we're being outclassed in most matches. That being said, once I got in and kind of discovered more into the community, I got into legacy with like STDs and those guys have kind of opened it up and made it a lot bigger. The name, I know it's hilarious. I know, <laughs> I know it's the best name ever. Um, so those guys have opened it up and I do see a lot in free agents right now, people coming in, we are midway through the season. So I don't know how many people are reaching out to them, but it's a lot of people who are un, I don't know if they're unproven, but they're untested in the THL coming in at like 500 PR at one and two. That is a lot to spend on somebody who is a brand new untested player. Th those are your one and two slots. Those are like gold. You can't really afford somebody that isn't going to be a hundred percent getting a winning rate um and not only that even coming in at a 340 which i believe that's what i came in in legacy and i'm down to a 290 so it's very tough to find someone to slot into a lineup especially if you're brand new into the community nobody really knows you or your voice and they just don't know your play style and you have to mesh with your team as well it's not just about pr at the end of the day you have to be a good person to get along with not saying anyone isn't a good person to get along with, but it's difficult when heads are budding and things like that happen to have a team to mesh so well together, like we see with MPH right now, which is why I think they're doing so well. It's an organization that has been together for so long and has meshed so well together that they're finally at that point where they're continuing and they're not going to bring a new person on to disrupt that chemistry that they have going. So I think it's extremely difficult for a new person to join in with not only the caliber of player we have here, but just the tight knit community, not saying that we're, you know, ousting people, but it is, it's a difficult community to, to penetrate when you're first coming in a brand new, it's almost like walking up to a mountain and being like, Oh my God, this is bigger than I thought. <laughs> All right, Ron. What are your thoughts? All right. I'm going to go with the patented Icicles move here and say that this is kind of a trampling rhino type of question <laughs> because I think it, it, it hinges very much on your interpretation of what harder for new players to join means. Um, it, 
it might just involve tempering your expectations a little bit because if you're strictly talking player caliber, you can't possibly say that the caliber of players hasn't gotten to a point where it can be straight up intimidatingly difficult for someone who wants to join THL and hit the ground running and start winning a whole lot of games uh, because that's going to be something that prompts their engagement, right? That is probably not going to happen unless you are an, just an extremely strong player who might have already gotten a whole lot of uh, ladder validation or otherwise because you do really well in tournaments or you know you you wind up finishing really high on ladder or something because that's kind of where we're at as far as all the players that have joined recently and how good they are but there's a whole different side of things like you can create your own team there can be people that are joining that maybe are just looking to have a little bit more fun uh by playing in a competitive uh engaging type of community like thl we have all these awesome shows to participate in you don't need to be a, a super dominant player to have fun by like participating in thl just because you might not be like the strongest most competitive player uh you can really enjoy being a part of this community and adding something that we need whether it's you know support for teammates or or subbing in here and there or possibly what might be one of the most important things is if you change that expectation and instead of saying i'm going to come in here and i'm going to start beating up no, it's I'm going to come in here and I'm going to learn from playing what might be some of the best of the best that are competing in Hearthstone right now. Uh, when it comes to like a completely free, you know, no prizes, no entry barriers uh, and no real you know, true stakes at heart, right? Um, we're, we're all playing this for fun and for pride and to improve on Hearthstone. So you can join THL and you can say, okay, I'm going to get on a team or I'm going to form my own team or band together with like a group of friends and we are going to practice and we're going to play against people that are better than we are right now and we're going to keep on improving because the caliber of play is so high that it raises up everyone else around you to the point that you can actually really get close to uh, a, a goal for yourself of what you might set just by joining THL. So harder in some ways, yeah. I mean, if you expect to just show up and start winning THL championships, uh, sorry, might be a little bit too late on that one. Maybe the boat has sailed uh, because, you know, you should have joined like four or five seasons ago or something before all these monsters started joining. But uh, if you want to join to get into content, get into broadcasting a little bit, like you can hone those skills and you can just participate in a really cool, awesome community uh, that, that supports you. <laughs> I'm I'm out of talking points. I know you're <laughs> counting for me. Just I'm look, so he had like a five this. point lead on me. I, I'm Come done. On. I, <laughs> I looked over I, at the points. I'm like, if this guy rambles listen, for six points, I quit. <laughs> listen, listen, I can't, I can't catch up to Corin in here. I gotta I stay on brand to get that second place. It's <laughs> in my nature. Okay, so I I truly believe all of these points that I said. I wasn't just rambling for points. Um, but uh, I I really like this question, and I think yeah. it's something that uh. That like depending on how you look at it, you can look at it a couple different ways, and it's still a very welcoming place. Yeah, no, it's a great question. <laughs> Thank you, I wrote it. Um, <laughs> oh, right. you wait, you wrote that? I complimented the question. Point, point, <laughs> Tanner Demako. <laughs> uh, all righty. Well, uh, for the second time ever. We have a back-to-back -back champion. This is not uh, the the only other person to do this so far has been uh, Icicles. Um, oh wow! Yeah, that's, yeah, that's high standing. An elite crowd. Um, I think he did it in his first two shows, actually. If I'm not if I'm not mistaken. Um, so uh, welcome to the club. But this also means that you get to compete next week to become. Next week or two weeks from now, I'll, I'll figure out. Next show to potentially become the first ever back to back to back champion, possibly. Potentially. Triple crown. The triple crown. The triple crown. Yeah. Um. All righty. So, uh, the floor is yours. I'm gonna give you some time to talk, and uh, you have. I'm just stalling for time as I fix the screen. Lethal. 
Um, we just had a lot to talk about there, so I really don't have much to go on. I do think everything Ron and I were saying there, I would love more people in THL to come in, obviously. We love to have more people into the community, rather if you're a brand new player or, or if you're not looking to play. If you want to get into, you know, the casting side, the content side, we're always looking for more help there. I know we are, like... We struggle for finding offers every now and then. The content is always blowing up for people. So even if you're in the THL and you're kind of, you know, a lurker in the Discord, feel it out. You know, you might find uh, a spot that yeah, that works for you. I really just started casting because of Saku. And now, you know, I've kind of wormed my way into the community and people know who I am. So it's, it's pretty cool. Um, and it'd be awesome just to get more people into the community and i think ron had the best point and it's really uh the easiest one to get into because there's no really huge commitment there's no money there's no barriers it's just you know at the end of the day you're here to have fun to play a kid's card game <laughs> yep at the end of the game that's all, all it is right yeah um all righty let's uh oh they muted themselves i'm usually the one that mutes and i was gonna unmute them um, I'm going to pretend like I'm unmuting Justin and Marty right now, but I'm actually just going to let them unmute themselves. So, uh, welcome back to the crowd. You have been unmuted. Allegedly. Thanks. Allegedly. Yeah. Allegedly. Allegedly. You <laughs> did gain a point throughout their talking times, by the way. I don't know if you <laughs> noticed that. Um, I'm trying to remember what it was you said, but I, I saw it and I started laughing and I... GMs can join, right? Uh... That was your comment? think it was yeah yeah well, yeah what are you telling what are you talking about it's still easy for gms to join yeah i laughed at that and I <laughs> gave you a point. um but yeah um a couple of things before i i let them say their final words um one if you have thought about subbing now is the perfect time because we're live and your name would pop up on there and that's exactly what people like is they like to see their name on things um we appreciate it all the money we get from subs goes right back into the community we don't get anything else from that we don't take any of it home so as much as i would like to do that it all goes back to you um along with that if you look on your handy dandy twitch app or desktop app or um website you will see a uh if you scroll down a little bit you will see a um um uh uh what's called like a widget for the shop um you can scroll through some of the merch items that we have on our store um all of the money that we get from that also goes right back into you guys we started doing the wicked well it was wicked sundays but we're going to move it to a weekday so it might be on mondays it might be on wednesdays we're still trying to figure it out but the week, the bi-weekly tournaments that will give out packs to the top three, these are because we have the revenue from the store and from the subs and all that to put it back into you know the community. So um, if you would like to purchase any THL stuff, then feel free. Um, I'm not going to force you, but it's pretty neat. I made it all myself, so um, I'm happy about it. Also, if you're looking for the shop, you can go to our, our website, which is uh, teamarthlegends.com. And then at the very, very, very top right, you'll see shop, and you can click that, and it'll direct you right exactly to where you need to be. Um, while I was talking, uh, Nade subscribed with Prime. Thank you very much. And then, Hey, that's my buddy. It is your buddy. Yeah. He was, uh, he was talking about you in there in chat. And then um, Dusharmo gifted the sub to C-Mac. So... We got two subs there. Look, it's all you got to do is you just got to bring it up and people are like, oh, yeah, I have that. And then Justin linked the um, the 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 link to the store as well. It's not as it's not as neat as, you know, the the THL link, but whatever. It's fine. It gets you there. It does. the job. <laughs> Anyways, um, anything you guys want to say before we head out? Yeah, um, I think this week, you know, Every week I'm on, I give a little lesson, and I think our little lesson for this week is a little political thing called filibustering, where you <laughs> keep rambling show. on and on until <laughs> you get your point across. Exactly. In this case, your multiple points, which apparently was supposed to not be allowed, but that turned out to be a lie. So now I know for the future, and so do you in the audience. So talk as much I, as you want and listen, just keep going. Listen. You don't ever have to stop. Hold on. I'm still going. <laughs> nice. I'm still going. You don't ever have to stop. Cloture, cloture vote. Listen, 
Um, I I said when we got to the final question, uh, with with you know the very 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 last question, I told them, I told both of them before we started that question. I said you can ramble if you would like for this question because there is a lot that goes into it, and it's a. Thinker. I was so nervous. So I don't. <laughs> Going going last in that question, you win, right? Because you could just ramble. <laughs> like, <laughs> you had a massive lead, well, though. I was I like, I'm not going to keep going. Yes yes, and no, <laughs> but because when I – I will say this. I'll pull back the curtain. We'll do a little bit of kayfabe here. Um, we'll break the kayfabe. Um, when, when, I, when I do give the points and someone, you know, has been talking for a little bit, um, at least since, since the last show um, – before that, it wasn't the case because I tried to change how I give the points. But at least since last show, when someone's been talking for a little bit, I, I stop giving points unless they bring up an entirely new topic. So, um, or not topic, but an entirely different point. So instead of just elaborating on the same point over and over like it, what it was before, um, because before you could just keep talking about the same point and just bring up something new within that point, and I would just give you a point for that. But now you just need to bring up a whole new point that relates to you know your what what we're talking about to try and curb that. Doing strats. Yeah, yeah, past two weeks have yeah. gotten a lot better. The uh, curb the, the curb script curb. writers have been a lot more creative the past two weeks and how points were awarded. Yeah, so. yeah, we hired some new. Instead of writers. stretching out the one plot line, <laughs> you have a bunch of subplots that you have. <laughs> all to that money from the shop can put to good use. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, you, you just have to hit them all as quickly as possible. Exactly. Is what I'm getting. That's what we want. We're trying to so. we're trying to end the show at ten o'clock from now on an hour show instead of an hour and a half and here it is at ten fifteen, anyways, <laughs> I'll stop talking because I rambled for an extra like six minutes there and that was unnecessary. Um, we will be back with episode four and hopefully Corridan will be back with us um, to defend defend. That'd be two defense, right? Yeah, defend defend his crown. Um, and I'm gonna try and make that look less like a Dorito for next time. If I remember, oh, I like it. No, I'm just gonna try. And, I'm gonna cut out the the like the the like orange in the in the ring, like the crown part. Anyways, you right in the shit. middle, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, we will talk to you then. Wave goodbye. Adios, Justin. Wave. Thank you, Marty. Wave. No, at the same time, everybody wave. wave. Everybody, wave. thank.